Alright guys, so today I'm going to be showing you how to make a front mount intercooler for your Nissan Juke and this does work on the European and Australian models as well. So let's get to it. So what I'm about to show you guys how to do this with works with the Mishimoto Z-Line intercooler, which is this one that I have here. This is a used one I have floating around. Or it works with any number of two and a half inch inlet uh, intercoolers. Now, an intercooler of this size is perfect for the factory turbo juke up to about 20 psi. So you can find intercoolers on eBay and Amazon, uh, or you know through Garrett or whatever your preferred intercooler company is that are of this size. This intercooler measures from end to end 28 inches long and six and a half inches tall. If that's uh, a reference number that you need. So to do this, you are going to need an intercooler, obviously. You're going to need a varying selection of pipes and couplers, and I'm going to break down what each one of these is. This will save you a ton of frustration and a ton of money. So, starting with the smallest coupler, you're going to need a two and a half inch inner diameter uh, hump flex coupler, or if you can't find one, just a straight two and a half inch coupler at least three inches long. You're going to need a 135 degree, two and a half inch inner diameter coupler. Has to be 135 degrees. I'll get to that, uh, get to why that is in a minute. You're going to need a two and a half inch to 2.25 inch, 45 degree reducing coupler. And I'll get to why that is in a minute. Um, this coupler is kind of hard to find, though I will put a link in the description as to where you can get all of these in one place for pretty cheap. You are going to need a two and a half inch inlet and outlet, 180 degree uh, U-shaped coupler. It needs to be shaped like this. It can be a little taller in the center section. That doesn't really matter, but it does need to be one of these. You are going to need a two and a half inch, 45 degree um, aluminum pipe. Um, these are one foot long, pre-bent with um, the bevel on the end already, uh, so that would be perfect. You're also going to need a two and a half inch inlet and outlet 90 degree, two foot long pipe. Um, it doesn't have any bevels on the end. We are going to be trimming this down a little bit to make sure it fits properly. And you're going to need a one foot long, two and a half inch pipe. I buy them in two foot length just because when I need to make one of these down the road, I already have one of the pipes laying around. So this particular step uh, you can ignore and skip if you only plan on making one of these. Otherwise, you're going to see how I make this into a one foot long pipe with the bevels on the end. Now, on top of that, you're going to need a few sections of one foot long aluminum bar stock or steel. Uh, this is to make the actual mounting hardware. Uh, if you get steel, then you're going to be making mounting hardware that go goes up and over the crash bar. If you get aluminum, you're going to be making hardware to mount the intercooler from the bottom. Really, it's dealer's choice. It doesn't make that much of a difference whichever way you do it. Or if you really want, you can do it both ways. You're also gonna need clamps, obviously. Uh, so aside from the piping and couplers, you are gonna need a couple of tools. Um, you, you're gonna need these. Uh, you're gonna need a nice and sharp razor blade. A safety blade works best for those of you that have never worked with a bare blade before. Uh, you're going to need modified wire crimpers or uh, some sort of tool to create that lip on the end of the piping. I have a video, I'll put a link in the description, uh, how to make these. I use these, they work awesome, they're quick, they're cheap, I think they cost me like $10 to make. And you're also gonna need some way to cut the pipe. Um, I have a bandsaw, so I'll be using that. You can use a grinder, um, anything with sharp enough that can cut straight lines will work. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is modify our couplers for our application. Now, if you put the 180 degree and the 135 degrees from each other, you'll notice they're really long. So we actually need to reduce the length of the leg uh, on one side of each so that it actually fits inside the space in front of the radiator. So that's what our razor blade's for. You're going to, I do this by eye, but you're going to want to measure back about about an inch and three quarters, uh, and you're gonna wanna cut that off of the 135 degree one. So to do that, 
Okay, I'm going to get rid of that. Let's see what that. Get rid of that. So that looks like that. We're going to do it to this one as well. The, the trick is to leave enough space before the actual bend to go over the end of the intercooler. That's the actual big trick here. These couplers are modified, so we can go ahead and put them aside. Uh, these two couplers, the hump coupler and the 45 degree coupler, you do not have to touch. You can leave those alone and put those aside. Uh, the 45 degree, uh, two and a half inch, uh, one foot long pipe does not need to be touched, so you can put that aside. Now we're going to move on to the stuff that actually really makes a difference. Alright, so we're going to take our two foot long two and a half inch diameter aluminum pipe. I'm going to take it out of wrapping. Now, you want to cut off of each end about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. You have room for error if you go a little too long with the total length of the pipe, but if you cut it too short, you're going to run into a problem when you go to put it on the car. So you kind of want to cut off too little instead of cutting off too much. So we're going to cut off from this one to about right here. I'm going to do the same thing on both sides. Now you're probably asking, well, why don't you just buy a pipe that's the right length? Um, they don't sell pipes uh, with these bends in them. Uh, in between one foot and two feet long um, and I don't have a mandrel bender that can do aluminum so you know spending a little time cutting off the head just is what it is so we're gonna cut that and then also I said at the beginning um, I add an extra step by buying two foot long sections of inch and a half I mean sorry by buying two foot sections of uh, two and a half inch straight pipe so an extra step that I have to do is to actually cut this sucker in half and make it one foot. So now we're going to cut those pipes. So you want to make sure the outside edges are nice and smooth, you don't want any burrs. And then on the inside, if you made this tool like I did, you can actually use what's left of the cutting head to actually clean the burrs off of the inside. So that's a deburring tool. Alright, so the next thing you're going to want to do is actually put um, the ridges on the end so that your couplers don't keep blowing off on you. Uh, it's a mistake that I see a lot of people do when they try to do this themselves is they put the couplers on like this and they just tighten the crap out of them and they always end up popping off or blowing off um, which is a pain in the butt because you have to take your bumper off to fix that so we're going to make that so we don't have to do that So then you just do that for the other sides. Now that we have the beads put on these pipes, all of the piping is done. So all that's left is to do the brackets. Now, like I said, um, if you're using pieces of aluminum, you're going to be making straight brackets for the bottom of the intercooler. Uh, if you are using steel like this, um, you can make hanger brackets that actually go over the intercooler. Uh, the reason you can't do that with aluminum is the amount that you have to bend the aluminum, it will most likely break unless you're using some really thick aluminum, which is overkill. So, 
if you have steel, what you're going to do is you need a 10 inch section. You need to do a couple of bends in it using a hammer and a vise is the easiest way to do it. So if you're using steel, you need to make your brackets look like this. You're going to be mounting to the intercooler here. And then this is what goes over the crash bar. Um, typically what I do is make this end here three inches. Um, and that leaves plenty of room to mount the intercooler and then the rest of it just needs to go up and over. When you make the brackets, try to do two of them at the exact same time so that the brackets are even. But the plus side of making brackets like this is when you get it on the car, you can bend and twist them until it actually sits level and sits centered. Um, so that's how you would do it out of steel. Um, because of the way that I'm doing this intercooler, we are not going to be doing it out of steel, we're going to be doing it out of aluminum. Uh, you are going to want a drill for this, and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to drill a hole about a half inch off from the ends. So you want to do it there and there. Um, that hole needs to be big enough to fit the bolt for your intercooler. So you're going to want to take your bolt that's going through your intercooler, you want to find the appropriate drill bit for it and make sure that you drill it so that it goes through there. Now, since you're mounting it on the bottom, uh, there's a varying number of places in which you can actually mount it on the bottom. Um, I don't have a car in front of me right now to make the rest of this bracket. Basically, all you're going to do is you're going to support the intercooler up on jack stands. Um, you're going to bolt the brackets onto the bottom. And you're going to kind of just move them back and forth until you find a location where you can actually bolt them down. Uh, on the Jukes in the USA, there is a bolt hole right underneath the radiator, um, kind of, it's kind of like right underneath the farthest end of the radiator on the driver's side, and then where your factory intercooler goes, use some washers, and you actually bolt it there. Um, so I'm going to show you guys a clip when I installed this kit onto my Juke so you can get an idea of that. So that is pretty much how you're going to make all the pieces for the kit. Now how does this all go together? We're going to picture that the intercooler is here. I don't have enough room on the table to put the intercooler up here. So this is going to be the passenger side and this is going to be the driver's side. Now on the passenger side, you're going to have your 135 degree coupler uh, that goes up coming out of the intercooler there. Your 45 degree pipe. Um, you're going to have go into that 135 degree coupler. You want it facing at an angle like that. When you go to put it on the car, you can play around with how that goes. That's all there is on the passenger side. Uh, this goes into your intercooler piping up top, your factory intercooler piping, or even the in-gen stuff it fits both. And then this goes onto your intercooler. Now on the driver's side is where things get a little different. You're going to take your 180 degree coupler that we trimmed. The trim part is going to go on the intercooler like that. Now off of this, you're going to take your straight one foot section. And you're going to put your straight coupler onto that. Then you're going to take the other end and put it into your 180 degree pipe. Like so. Then you're going to take your 90 degree pipe and you're going to put your 45 degree reducing bend onto that. Like so. Then when you go to put it on the car, that goes in like that. Do not clamp anything down until you have everything fitted where you want it so the intercooler is sitting the way you want it. Because when you clamp it down, it makes it really, really hard to move things around. But that's how you make a front mount intercooler setup for your Juke or your MR160 DT. It's very simple. Um, the whole setup, if you hunt around for it, is pretty cheap. Um, like I said, an intercooler to the size of the Z-Line is good to about 19, 20 PSI before you start having some problems with it. But most people aren't going to be running that much boost anyway, so it's perfectly efficient. Yes, it is good if you're on a factory tuned. Yes, it's good if you're on a factory turbo. So that's pretty much all there is. So why don't you guys let me know if you plan on doing this down in the comments below. Uh, let me know if you guys have any other parts that you want to see how to make with just tools you have at home. And also, if you do this, let me know how it made out. Uh, and let me know what you think of it afterward.
Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Have a good day.